Hello there. Uh, my name is Noel Williams, and today I'm going to be talking to you about 3D printing. Um, this is my 3D printer, and as you can see, it's working on a clone trooper helmet. Um, 3D printing is really great. It's basically like having your own little robot genie. Um, you think of something that you want to make, and then you tell it, hey, make this, and then it makes it for you. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that, and I'm going to get into that. But um, actually, I don't like this outfit that I'm wearing. I think I need to change. That's so much better. Okay, so I'm going to take the camera in a little bit closer and we're going to talk about how this thing works. So you're probably thinking, Noah, do you really have a robot genie that makes you Star Wars armor? And kind of. Um, 3D printers aren't actually magic. Um, and how they work is there is a, a nozzle um, right here. And what it does is it gets really, really hot and it shoots out a little tiny um, bead of uh, plastic filament. So you can see my filament right here, um, and it looks just like plastic string. Um, this string gets heated up and then shot out of the nozzle, and you can see the nozzle moving around here. And so what it does is um, you tell the printer how to move, and then it moves this nozzle around in two dimensions. So it just moves it back and forth, um, and then once it has one layer done, then it moves up. And so it stacks up tons and tons, thousands of these little tiny layers, so small that one, you can't even really see them. So the first thing that 3D printers do really well is making one of a certain thing. Um, so if you say need a hundred clone trooper helmets because you're going to build an army, 3D printing them would probably not be the way to go. Uh, casting them would be better because casting, you have to make one mold and then you can make a ton of different helmets out of that same mold. 3D printing takes the same amount of time to make the helmet no matter how many of them you're doing. Um, so 3D printing is really good for doing just one of something. Okay, the next thing that 3D printing is really good at is doing very precise shapes. Um, so say you need um, a helmet and you want it to look exactly like this, like exactly like what you see on the movies, 3D printing is a great way to do that because there's going to be no human error in it because you're taking something from the computer and then you're printing it out. There's no human involvement in the middle. So it's really good for doing stuff like so that. So even though 3D printing is really good and there's a lot of good things that it can do, there are certain things that it just does not do well. Uh, one of those things is overhang. 3D printers are horrible at doing overhang, by which I mean parts that are they start off on the ground and then they build up and then eventually there's nothing beneath them. Um, like say an arch, that's pretty hard to 3D print. Um, and unfortunately, these helmets that I like to print have big overhangs right on the visor. You don't print this visor piece. Um, so how do you do that? You use what's called support. Support is, um, you can see it right here. Um, it's sacrificial material that gets printed. Um, and what I say when I mean sacrificial is that when you're done, with the print, um, you can pop it out. You can see right there, it's really thin and I can poke at it and it moves. Uh, that's because it's really, really thin and its only purpose is to hold up this layer right here um, because 3D printing needs something to lay down on top of um, and so that support is what uh, it can lay down on top of. So now you know a little bit more about how a 3D printer works. Um, so how do you use one? Um, how do you get started on making something like this? So there's probably going to be um, a public 3D printer somewhere around you that you could use. Um, some libraries have them, and here at the UW, we have them in our makerspace. Um, alternatively, you could purchase your own, like I have. Um, so once you have access to a 3D printer, what do you do to get started on printing a file? Uh, the first thing that you would want to do is you would want to find that file. Um, so there are plenty of great websites to get free files. Uh, most of this armor was printed using free files that I found on the internet. Now, once you've got your file and you know what you want to print, the next step is figuring out how to print it. Um, so once you need to take that file and you need to move it into a program called a slicer. Slicers convert 3D objects into something that a computer or that a 3D printer can understand. And the way that 3D printers think and speak and act is in a bunch of 2D um, layers that get stacked up on top of each other, like I was talking about earlier. And so what you have to do is this is called slicing the file and turning it into a bunch of two-dimensional things stacked up on top of each other. 
So you have to import your file into a slicer. Slicers are also free. Um, you basically put the file in, move it around, uh, pick where you need support, and then hit the button and the printer will get started at printing it. It's a very simple process and something that anybody can learn to do in just a few days and get great results just like this. 3D printing is truly one of the most revolutionary technologies that have come out of the 21st century. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed my presentation today about 3D printers and that it will inspire you to get started making something just like this. Enjoy.